All right, here we go. We are beginning with the Dark Elf Cauldron of Blood, the big, bad, mean machine. And starting with the centerpiece, the Statue of Cain. And I wanted a green marble look. So we're starting off with a very heavy dry brush of Vallejo Deep Green and mixed with black. Next comes straight deep green, and this is, uh, to get the marble sort of broke up pattern look to it, uh, we're stippling on this color. And stippling just means you take a short bristled brush, usually you just take an old brush and snip the end off, and just repeatedly stab at the miniature. And a uh, very easy process. It's almost a little bit like dry brushing, you want to rub some of the paint off, and if you're leaving uh, obvious lines or smears, you have too much paint on the brush. But uh, you can do this with a small brush, or you can also do it with a sponge too, uh, especially a, an Artist C sponge. It works really well. Um, I did try the sponge, it was a little bit difficult on this miniature though, due to all the, uh, all the trim on it. I really couldn't get the sponge in the areas where I wanted it, so that's why we're using the, uh, the little brush. After that comes the next stipple layer, which is Vallejo model color emerald, which is the standard uh, accentuating green color that I'm using on the rest of my Dark Elf army. Um, I've been wanting to add a bit more of this color into the army uh, color theme because it's not very uh, it's not very well represented in most of the army because it is a just a uh, extra color that I added into the main blue violet and blue scheme. So I thought this project would be a good idea to uh, insert a little bit more green into the army. The third stipple layer, I'm going back to the Vallejo model color deep green and added some yellow to it. And uh, this layer I probably should have skipped. Um, the key to doing a marble pattern with this stipple technique, and I, I forgot, was essentially less is more. You want contrast, and if you put on too many different colors of paint, you lose the contrast. You want a very dark color, a medium main color, and then a very light color, maybe even white. And uh, by adding this step, I added too much green, too many colors to it, and I kind of lost uh, lost the deep dark color of that original uh, coat to it because I just covered it up. So uh, I probably should have skipped this step. And then we go back to the Vallejo model color emerald green mixed with white. And the reason why I'm going back and forth between warm greens and cool greens is because I'm not really highlighting it. I'm trying to get a broken a pattern, uh, a stone look to the statue. and. As you know, stone comes in a wide variety of colors, and so when you're doing something like this, you, you can add a huge variety of colors, especially if you're doing like a brown stone. I mean, you can put reds in it, and blues in it, and greens in it. But uh, so we're, we're not highlighting here, we're just trying to get a broken up pattern look. The last step is to add a very heavy glaze of Vallejo black green ink, and this is to give some. A look of depth to the marble. Um, it does tone down the colors quite a bit, which is um, at this point is what I decided to go for. Uh, something a bit more subtle rather than um, something more extreme in the contrast because I thought that it would look better with all the uh, all the trim that's on this model. So using that extra deep green yellow color I did previously wasn't a, a huge loss. Um, since I was putting this heavy glaze on it anyway. And so, straight out of the bottle, black and green ink. And um, I did this twice, let it dry completely, and then did it again. And then we could move on uh, to the rest of the bits. For the runes, the glowing runes on the statue, uh, I started out with some very thin... Um, I don't remember exactly what color this was. I think I mixed up my own color out of yellow and red. However, it's a it's a yellowish paint, and it's uh, thin very well. Put on with a my eyeball brush, very tiny brush, and 
just trying to fill in the runes, but it's okay if we go over because that's going to lend to the glowing effect. And then after doing that, I decided to repaint over all of it with some, I believe, Vallejo game color gory red. So the yellow, originally I thought about doing the runes yellow, and then I decided it'd be better if they were a bit deeper in color, more red. Uh, however, I left that previous part in because that light color yellow affects this color going over it. Since the red is very thin, the lightness of that previous color shows through on the red. So if you're doing runes like this, it's actually a good idea to go over it first in a very light color, yellow or white. And if you then apply a darker color over it, that'll help it, the runes to pop a bit more. So we are going over the runes again with red. And you notice I'm not being too careful at this point. I'm going over the lines because that's going to help with the glowing effect. As we move into smaller bits, we'll start being more careful about painting um, the lines a bit more carefully using lighter and lighter colors. Then with the red done, I mixed up some orange paint uh, just by mixing up red and yellow together and um, went in and started painting the lines, being a bit more careful this time. Uh, the paint is very thin, so it tends to uh, just flow into the, the recesses, into the cracks. Uh, so you don't have to be too worried about uh, painting a perfect line here. You can see there I just wiped some off my finger where I messed up. Um, but uh, the paint should be thin, so it just kind of flows along in the recesses. Uh, we're being a bit more careful painting it than we were with the red. However, we're not being super careful. Uh, as we get smaller and smaller and lighter colors, we'll start trying to be more careful with the application. And then the final step is the lightest color, which is yellow mixed with a little bit of white. And now we're being very careful to paint directly in the lines. So that previous red color and that previous orange color are on the outsides of our now glowy looking lines. And um, after this was dry, I carefully went over it with a yellow glaze to blend the colors in together and give them a bit more depth. Um, and that is it. Skipping ahead a bit now, and the gold is all done. And I was trying to, I was going to take care of the, how to paint the gold later in the video. However, it just didn't work out. Suffice it to say, the gold is painted just as it was in the previous projects. Go see the painting shades one. Uh, the only difference was that due to the large area, um, I couldn't use a wash on it. So what I did is I mixed my color party brown ink in with gold. Um, and then use that as a shade to build up uh, regular gold on top of that. So uh, the layering method is flat earth and gold. So we have a good undercoat, then color party brown ink and gold for shade, then my gold ink and then silver mixed with that. So that's the gold. Now the silver here, the same issue. This is too large of a surface area to use a wash on. It's it's not a good recipient for a wash. So I used I base coat in the silver, or excuse me, my Vallejo Air steel color. And then I mixed that color with some blue and black ink. And then it took several layers to build up the proper uh, shade that I wanted, it took about five or six. But uh, it's about the only way you can get a good depth on a flat surface like this. The statue's now done, so now on to the chariot itself. And going for a blue chariot, uh, I wanted it a bit darker though because I was afraid painting it my very light blue would make this thing look a bit too circus cartoony-ish. So we're starting with a, a heavy dry brush of the stormy blue. And then to this we're adding our Vallejo Game Color Magic Blue. Uh, this is, uh, I'd say, about 60% stormy blue, 40% um, magic blue, and uh, just a heavy dry brush over everything. And then a final very careful dry brush just on the edges with straight magic blue. Now normally magic blue is my base color, and to this I would uh, add white a couple times to continue to highlight, but again, 
I wanted this a bit darker because I was afraid making it too bright would, uh, being such a large object, object being a bright color, I thought would look too silly. So we're keeping this thing a bit darker this time. So after painting the Cheria blue, I went back and painted it all over again with the my blue violet color. Yeah, I decided it was too blue for uh, to match the rest of the army, and so I had to go back and paint the uh, repaint the whole thing with purple, uh, repeating the same process just with my blue violet colors again, keeping it darker than normal. Um, I don't always get get it right the first time, and sometimes I have to repaint something. That's just what happens. But uh, once that's done. Uh, this is just a quick uh, show you, I couldn't remember if I kept this in, uh, if I video uh, taped this or not, but this is the my Glorious Golden mixed with my Color Party, uh, Nameless Color Party Brown ink, which you can make the same thing with uh, brown and yellow. And uh, again, can't use a wash because of these large surface areas, so this is the, the shade layer, and then on top of this I'll be painting straight gold. onto the stairs now and the steps on the stairs I kept that blue color that I previously used on uh, the bottom of the chariot uh, now we're doing the blue violet that I used the second time around on the sides of the stairs so uh, starting off again trying to get it darker than normal so we're starting off with uh, Vallejo monocolor violet mixed with some black Next comes a heavy dry brush of Vallejo model color violet and um, just using a big brush for the outside and then on the inside I'll, I switch to a smaller brush so uh, I don't get any purple paint on the blue stairs and um, this was about at the point where I was getting really frustrated with the model because uh, it's very complex and it was a pain in the butt to uh, paint up and I was at the I just wanted to get this done stage which is always uh, a dangerous stage uh, for a painter because this is when you just stop caring and you just want to get it done so uh, a lot of dry brushing here now working the highlights out towards the from the center towards the bottom and the top of the uh, stairs banister I'll call them and uh, mixed in a little bit of blue violet to the violet, very thin, and uh, just carefully applying it to the top and bottom of the stairs. And then repeating it again with, um, I honestly can't remember if this is straight Vallejo model color blue violet or if it still has a little bit of violet mixed in. I think this is straight. Um, don't hold me to that though, but again, just repeating the process, trying to get a bit more highlights towards the, the edges of the stairs there. The final step is to do some crisp edging with Vallejo Blue Violet mixed with some Wolf's Gray. And I want you to notice how I'm using the brush, at what angle the bristles are on the model as compared to the previous step. Uh, I'm holding it at about a 45 degree angle, so, and I'm using the edge of the brush, not the tip of the brush, um, to get a clean, crisp edge. Uh, a lot of beginner painters just tend to use the brush at like a 90 degree angle on the model, and uh, that's not the best way to apply paint. Your your brush bristles are like a wedge. It, they have they have the tip, they have the sides, depending on what angle you use, you can get different effects uh, based on how you paint. So um, using the edge here and the angle that it's being applied at gives me a good crisp edge uh, along the stairs. Uh, again, you don't always want to use the tip of your brush. Sometimes the side is, uh, most often you want to use the side, um, but uh, you know, never don't think you're using your brush just one way. There's multiple ways to use your brush. Now, on to the decals. Uh, a majority of the new Dark Elf boxes comes with a really cool decal sheet, and I was looking for an excuse to use some of them, and the sides of the stairs seemed like a good opportunity. So uh, I undercoated uh, the purple areas with some Pledge with Future Shine, some 
acrylic gloss coat uh, because you always want to put decals over a glossy surface. And now I'm just going around and applying a whole bunch of decal runes. Now my original idea was to show you how you can use decals as a template for drawing your own runes. Just uh, put on a decal and then you could paint over it in any other color. Um, basically as a guide to hand, hand paint your runes and so uh, you know help with your freehand painting skills. Uh, however, uh, I went over the runes with some Vallejo Deep Green and that alone actually worked pretty well because the white decal underneath uh, and the transparent green paint left a glowy effect already. I was going to do that by doing several layers and working up from green to white, but it wasn't necessary because uh, the white decal over the darker purple surface just by putting that thin transparent tra excuse me transparent layer of green over it, it was it was like an instant glowing rune. So uh, that was a big time saver. And the final step for the Cauldron of Blood is to add some blood. And I'm mixing up some Vallejo red ink mixed with a little bit of blue ink. Red for the blood, blue to darken it a bit. And um, just mixing up uh, something blood-like. And then to this, I'm actually mixing up way more than I actually need, by the way. But uh, you never know how much blood you want to apply. Anyway, to this I'm uh, adding a uh, large amount of my Pledge with Future Shine, as I used previously on the decals, and to make a nice saucy blood pile here. And then this gets added to our cauldron itself. And I'm using a pipette rather than a brush because uh, I wanted to go on perfectly smooth and I wanted a fairly, a fairly thick layer of blood to give a nice good good translucent effect and uh, the plastic blood piece I just painted up with some random red colors and um, the uh, the slightly darkened blood here should give a, a good idea of depth because of the gloss but uh, just the cauldron and then just a little bit by hand on the goblet and uh, that's it we're done And finally, we are done with the Cauldron of Blood. Um, I couldn't get it all in the frame with the video camera, but don't worry, there's photos here at the end. Also, the Witch Elves, uh, I didn't cover them because I'll be covering on how to paint them in the Witch Elf video coming soon. A uh, couple things I wanted to say real quick. Um, pain in the butt model to paint. Uh, the one main mistake I made was putting everything together before painting it. Uh, if you're following along, do not put this thing together. Paint it separately and then put it together. You could put the stairs together, put the statue together, but the under chassis portion, paint that separately because it was extremely difficult trying to get into all those nooks and crannies and I was getting really frustrated and I was rushing to get it done because I was sick of it, which uh, usually leads to a very poor paint job in the end. Um, the second thing is I at a, at a point, I think I made a mistake painting the Statue of Cain green. Uh, when you're painting a project, you want the paint to be balanced. Uh, in this case, I have a lot of blue on the bottom and I have a lot of green on top, which I wasn't happy with until I painted the runes on the sides of the stairs. Once I started to get more green on the bottom of the model, I was more satisfied with it. So I'm okay with it now, but still, I may go back one day and repaint the statue blue. However, I got a lot to do and you have a lot to watch. So we'll leave that to another day. And until then, we'll just enjoy this piece as it is and uh, move on to something else real soon. See you then.